When you're shooting at an angle, whether it be uphill or downhill, you're gonna notice a change in the impact in your bullet. If you don't compensate for that angle, the bullet's gonna impact higher than you expect. Hi, my name is Ryan Kleckner with the National Shooting Sports Foundation. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to figure out what angle you're shooting and how to compensate for that angle so you hit the target. We're gonna talk about some concepts in this video that may be complicated for some viewers. If you're not familiar or competent with minutes of angle, mill radians, or even wind estimation, I suggest you pause this video and go watch our previous videos on those topics so you have those concepts down well. It'll let you get more from this video. So when I say that you're gonna notice a change in impact of your bullet, and I say that you're gonna end up missing high, that's because of gravity. Now, gravity doesn't affect the bullet differently depending on how you're shooting. Gravity is always pulling down on the bullet with the same force, no matter which way the bullet's flying. But that straight down that the gravity is pulling is gonna be at a different angle depending on how the bullet's flying, and therefore it's going to pull the bullet more or less off of its original path. Here's a simple way to look at it. If we were to shoot 500 yards straight across the ground, straight horizontal, gravity is pulling straight sideways on the bullet, and it's gonna actually affect the bullet the most, meaning it's gonna pull off its original path the most. So if we shot along this original path, the bullet's gonna fall further and further and further away from that original path. Matter of fact, if this was 500 yards, I know for my rifle, it's gonna fall about 60 inches, which is why I adjust up 12 minutes of angle on my scope to compensate for that drop. Well, when I shoot at different angles, the bullet doesn't drop as much, which is gonna cause me a problem if I try and adjust that much. Here's a way to look at it. Take it to the extreme case scenario shooting straight down. I found a cliff that gives me a 500 yard shot straight down to my target. Well, if that's the original path of my bullet, even though the same gravity is affecting my bullet, it's pulling along the original path, which means that that bullet flies down that path, it's not gonna deviate off the path at all. So even though I'm shooting 500 yards away, I'm not gonna get the 60 inch drop off the path. I'm gonna get no drop. It's gonna be like I just shot the target right at the tip of my barrel or 500 yards away, it's treating it exactly the same. Well, likewise, if I do an angle here in the middle, the bullet's going to fall more than here, but not quite as much as here. It's gonna be right in the middle. You see, the bullet's gonna fall away from the path, but just not as much, because now the straight down is pulling along the flight of the bullet, and it goes with the bullet. So here's the problem. If I'm shooting 500 yards at this angle, and I just look at my dope book, and I see I need to come up 12 minutes for 500 yards, I'm gonna miss over the target. You see, this 60 inch adjustment is too much. If I adjust up 60 inches, I'm going to miss up here, way over the target. I need to take a smaller elevation adjustment. Well, to compensate for the angles, it's actually quite simple. We're not gonna worry about what percentage of your elevation or, or what caliber you're shooting or, or really any of the data about your firearm. I'm trusting that you've already gone out and taken and figured out the elevation adjustments at certain distances. What I'm gonna have you do is treat the target like it's actually closer, because closer targets, the bullet doesn't drop as much because it doesn't have the time to, which is why we don't adjust up as much elevation for close targets. So even though the target is really 500 yards away, I'm gonna have you treat it like it's much closer. As a matter of fact, only so close to compensate for that drop. Well, what happens is we end up figuring out how far the bullet covers across the ground horizontally. You see, the straight down bullet really doesn't cover any horizontal ground, so that has a value of zero to me. I'm gonna treat the target like it's zero yards away. Whereas the first one I drew out here, the perfectly horizontal, that bullet is actually traveling the full 500 yards horizontally across the ground, so I'm gonna treat it like the full 500 yards of gravity. Well, this last example I gave, this angle here in the middle, it's only covering horizontal ground up to here, much less than the 500 yards. So what I do is I figure out this distance right here and I treat the target like it's only this distance away, not the full 500 yards in order to hit the target. So here's how it works out. Let's say I'm on a hill, I'm shooting down at a target. Now, this works the same uphill or downhill. I can just only draw shooting downhill. I'm not very good the other way, so we're gonna use this example. We're up here and you're shooting down at the target. And the true distance to the target, I mean, literally from the tip of your barrel all the way down to the target is let's say 400 yards in this example. 400 yards to the target. Well, what we just covered was you can't shoot it like it's 400 yards away. If you end up putting the elevation on your scope required to shoot this distance that you normally would across flat ground, 
you're going to miss too high because the bullet's not dropping as much. We talked about how we need to figure out what the horizontal distance is and only shoot it like it's this far away, which is always going to be a smaller length than this length. Well, to figure this out, we use some trigonometry. I'm not going to make you do complex calculations. I'm going to give you the numbers. It's going to be easy. But I at least want to show you where it comes from. If I have these two lines and I take and I connect them with this imaginary third line, what I make here is a right triangle. This allows us to use the trigonom trigonometry functions on these angles to figure out different legs of this triangle. Well, what we're going to use is the cosine. You see, I'm worried most about the angle that you have from straight out down or straight out up to where you're shooting. So this angle right there is what we're worried about. Now, trigonometry also tells us that this angle is the same as this angle, which is why this formula works. But all you're going to do to figure out what this length is, is you're going to take the true range to the target. You're going to take the distance that you see the target away. You're going to multiply it by the appropriate cosine, which again, I'm going to give you. And that's going to give you the angle range. That's going to give you this leg of the triangle, the horizontal distance, which you're going to treat the target being only that far away. So, well, what's the cosine? Well, I'm going to give you some of the cosines here. If you have a scientific calculator, you can figure these out more accurately. I'm just going to give them to you every 10 degrees because for me that ends up being close enough. So I'm going to have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Let's go all the way up to 80 degrees. Remember, 90 degrees is straight down. Just treat it like it's right in front of the barrel. Okay, well, at 10 degrees, the cosine is going to be 0.98. 20 degrees is 0.94, 0.87. 0.77. Okay, now these cosines are all smaller than one. They're all decimal places here. What that means is we're going to take this number and we multiply it by these numbers. We're going to get a smaller distance, which is what we want. So for this example, that it's really 400 yards away, for the sake of the math here, let's say this is a 40 degree angle. Well, let's look back to the simple formula to figure out the angle range. I take the distance, which is 400. I multiply it times the appropriate cosine. Well, I need to look over here to my chart to get the appropriate cosine. 40 degrees, the cosine for 40 degrees is 0.77. So I multiply that distance times 0.77. 400 times 0.77 gives me 308. This means that this leg of the triangle is only 308 yards long if that one's 400 yards long and that's 40 degrees. So when I shoot this target that's 400 yards away, I only put the elevation on my scope as if it was 300 yards away. Now if you're worried about wind from the wind estimation, you're going to have to treat it like the full 400 yards because we're not getting away from the fact the bullet is still traveling all 400 yards to the target. However, for gravity's sake, we treat it as if the target was only 300 yards away, which should be less of an elevation adjustment, which allows us to hit the target and not miss over the target. It's really that simple. Let's try a couple other examples to make sure we have it down. Same scenario, let's make it a little bit steeper this time. Let's say you're shooting at 60 degrees off of straight out, and the distance to the target is 500 yards. Well, how do we figure this out? We have our distance, we have our angle, and we can figure out the right cosine for that angle. So the distance, 500, multiplied times the appropriate cosine, which is 0 0.50, ends up giving us 250. That means that this leg down here is only 250 yards long, and we know that means we treat the target like it's only 250 yards away. That's quite a big difference. Instead of shooting it with actually the 12 minutes that I would here, you're going to shoot it with the 250 yards dope, which for me is probably about three minutes of angle. That would be a major miss if I didn't account for that. It's that simple. Now, the good news is this 60 degree angle, it's going to be pretty hard to come by. You see, in nature, it's hard to find more than 30 degrees unless you're looking at a cliff face. You see, when you have, uh, you go look on the horizon, you see a mountain range out there. If you pay attention next time, each angle of those mountains are going to be about the same, give or take. It's kind of like when you drive by a construction site and you look out there at the piles of dirt they have. Pay attention next time. And if you line them all up, the angles are all going to be about the same. They didn't stack them that way on purpose. That's just the angle at which the dirt naturally sloughs off on its own. We call that the angle of repose. That happens naturally. 
Well, the same thing happens with mountains. So if you're going to find more than a 30 degree angle, it's going to be something different about that mountain. You're not going to have a typical hill and have the distance from here to here be 50 or 60 degrees unless there's something going on like a cliff. So keep that in mind next time you're out trying to look at angles. I see a very common mistake is someone that's new to this will stand on top of the hill, look down at the potential target and do one of these and say, yeah, it's about 45 degrees. Well, when they actually figure out the actual angle, it ends up being only like 20 degrees. That's because, of course, for 45 degrees, you'd have to be down through the ground here. It's actually more than you think. Well, so how do you figure out the angle? One is you should get good at looking at it. So no matter what angle you come across and you figure it out, always take the time to stop and look at it and get a good mental image of what that angle looks like. That's going to help you in the future. But a way to figure out the angle is you can use, there are compasses, there are watches, GPS units. Some of these now have inclinometers in them for measuring the angle of slopes for avalanches or things. Well, you can use that to measure the slope of the hill that you're on. You can look down the edge of that to see the angle to the target that you're shooting if you have the time. There's also shooting specific tools. You can find plenty of them on the internet that have an angle finder on the back that either has a metal tab that hangs down or you can tie a string to it with a, like a fishing weight and you can look down this device and the string or the metal will hang at the right angle and it'll tell you what angle you're shooting. I even have a device on my scope called an angle cosine indicator that I really like. What it does is it mounts to my scope so I don't have to worry about forgetting it when I go out to the field. And it tells me the cosine right away. Because really the only reason I care about having an angle is so I can find the cosine. Well this thing just skips a step and tells me the cosine. So if I'm looking through my rifle down at a 40 degree angle, if I look at the screen on my angle cosine indicator, it doesn't tell me 40, it just tells me 0.77. And that reminds me to multiply the range that I'm actually looking at times 0.77 when I'm making my adjustment for elevation. Now, if you don't have one of these devices, and you end up taking and figuring out the range on your own by using mil radians. We use that mil estimation formula that we talked about before. You don't have a laser rangefinder with you because laser rangefinders nowadays, they tend to start having this in there. Some of the higher end ones have the adjustment in there for the angle. So it'll tell you the true range and it knows what angle it's looking at. But if you don't have that and you're using the mil estimation formula, you might run into troubles here. Now the reason is the mil estimation formula, like we covered in the other video, relies on the proportion of what the target looks like, the size that you're seeing the target at, versus the size the target should be. Because as we know, as targets get further away, they appear smaller. Well, you're measuring in your scope how small that target is based on what it should be, and that's how you can figure out the distance. Well, here's the problem. Your perspective changes on an angle. So you're back up on this hill looking down at the target, and you're shooting this eraser. Well, across flat ground, when you measure this, you're gonna see the whole height of the target. What happens when you're up higher or down lower you're gonna start seeing a different perspective. You're going to change the angle at which you're looking at the eraser. If you just look through your scope and measure it from the top to the bottom, you're gonna get a much smaller measurement when you're looking at it with an angle than if you were full on. Well, the problem is smaller means further away. So you're gonna have a couple problems here. You're not only gonna get a calculation for your mill formula that's gonna give you a distance that's way too far, but if you try to shoot that distance, not only are you gonna have it too far from the angle looking at it, you're gonna have it too far because you're shooting at an angle. So you have double the problem. Well, I don't wanna confuse you here. If you don't wanna use the mill estimation formula, you have a laser range finder, please just stick with this and it'll be simple and it'll work for you. However, if you wanna compensate for this angle change, you're gonna to have to use the cosine again. The way to think of it is I call the cosine an angle killer. Whenever I have an angle problem, I use the cosine. If I have another angle problem, I use the cosine again. So if we're using the height of an object, and we're using this mill formula, and I have an angle problem, I need to use the cosine there and for the angle. Here's what I mean. Back to our same hill we're shooting down at the target. If I'm looking down here through my scope and I use the mill estimation formula, I'm gonna get that number that's artificially too far because the angle I'm seeing is a lot smaller. So I'm gonna end up taking my mill range, which is gonna to be too big of a number because the object appears too small, and I have an angle problem, so I'm gonna introduce the cosine. So I'll take that mill range times the appropriate cosine will get me back down to my true range. But I can't stop there, because even when I get my true range, now I still gotta get back up into the formula again, because that just gives me what the target really is away, and I need to get a step down from that all the way down to the angle range. So then I would need to take that true range, multiply it by the cosine again, in order to get my angle range. Now, you can avoid this when you're using the mill estimation formula. You can skip this step altogether if you use a different perspective.
Well, you're already looking at a different perspective this way. So what I mean is a different perspective is looking at the target and how to measure. We all tend to measure up and down, or I do anyway. Well, if this target was tilted like this, so you see a smaller view from top to bottom, guess what dimension doesn't change? The width right in the middle. You see, no matter how I turn this, my fingers stay the same width apart right in the middle. Why not use the width? If you're dealing with a target that's standing straight up, and you're at a different angle, so you have a problem with perspective this way, just use the width of the target. Which means, when you start writing down known measurements, so you have an elk or a deer's height, so you can use for mill estimation, go ahead and start writing down the width too. Because you might run into a trouble where you're looking at a different perspective, just use the width, solves all the problems. Or, like I said, a good laser rangefinder or other methods can help solve this problem for you. Now, this is actually pretty simple. If you really only need to worry about one calculation, if you have one angle problem. Your actual biggest problem with using this is going to be finding a place long enough you can use to shoot. It's going to be pretty hard to find a range that allows you to shoot 500 yards at a 30 degree angle. Well, this same formula works regardless of the projectile. So if you're shooting a bow and you're in a tree stand, here's your tree, there's you in the tree stand, there's your target. If you're looking down to the target, and it's actually 40 yards to the target, you can figure out the angle that you're looking down multiply the appropriate cosine times the 40 yards and you'll get this flat distance across the bottom and shoot it like it's that far away. Or likewise, you might be able to just look down from the tree stand and see that the deer is really only 20 yards away. Regardless of how you find this distance, you still shoot the target like it's only that far away. So instead of your 40 yard pin, you use your 20 yard pin. I think we all know if you ended up accidentally shooting it like it was truly 40 yards, you're gonna miss over the deer just like you'd miss over that 500 yard target you shoot on the range. So get out, practice this. Practice looking at different angles and seeing what really exists, what compensation you'd really have to make to your elevation adjustments, and try it out. If you need to find a place to shoot, check out our website at wheretoshoot.org. And remember, firearm safety depends on you.